In this Blender tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this procedural stone material. Now, if you'd like to purchase the tutorial files, then you can get that over on my Gumroad store, and also my patrons will have access to the project files as well. So if you'd like to check out my Gumroad and Patreon, that's a great way to help support this channel. And if you'd like to purchase more of my procedural materials, you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs, and you can also check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist on YouTube if you'd like to learn how to create more procedural tutorials. And then one more thing before we start, this video was brought to you by my Blender tutorial courses on Gumroad. So I currently have two tutorial courses on my Gumroad store and I have plans for more tutorials in the future. So the first one that I have is this tutorial right here where I show you how to create this Martian environment in Blender. And then the second one is this one here where I show you how to create this sci-fi space station corridor in Blender. So if you'd like to check out the tutorial courses, I will have the links in the video description and purchasing the courses is a really great way to help support me and this YouTube channel. Now to have something nice to preview this object on, I just added a monkey head and I gave it a subsurf modifier and then shaded it smooth. And then I also added a subdivided icosphere and shaded it smooth as well. And then I also added this plain light right here within a mission material. And that way we get some nice bright lighting on our objects. And then also to get some very realistic lighting, I added in the forest slope 1K HDR and this is from polyhaven.com so it's a free HDRI and I'll have the link in the video description if you'd like to download it. So I just added it in here as an environment texture to get some nice natural lighting on these objects. And then I will also be using the Node Wrangler add-on in this tutorial so if you don't have that turned on you can go to edit and then open up Blender's user preferences. And then over on the add-ons tab you can search for the Node Wrangler add-on and just check mark the Node Wrangler add-on and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So I'm going to click on new and I can just call this material procedural stone and then I can click right here and I can drag and drop this material onto both of these objects. So to start off I'm going to press shift a and I'm going to search for a Voronoi texture. Let's drop the Voronoi right here and then using the node wrangler add-on if you select this texture you can press Control T and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. Although we don't need the mapping node so I'm just going to select it and I'll press X to delete it and then using another feature from the node wrangler I can hold them the Control and shift key and then click on different nodes to preview them. So I'm now going to take the object coordinates from the texture coordinate and I'm going to put that into the vector of the Voronoi and that's going to place the Voronoi texture around the objects more evenly. Now that isn't really looking like a stone texture and so I want to distort the Voronoi texture. So to do that I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a noise texture and we're going to drop the noise texture in between the texture coordinate and the Voronoi and that way the data from the noise texture is going to warp the Voronoi texture. And then I'm also going to turn the detail all the way up to 15 so that it's very detailed. You can see that's looking much nicer. And then I'll also turn the roughness up to a 0.55 so that there's just a little bit more roughness. All right, so let's plug the distance into the base color and then I will control shift and select the principled BSDF. Now that doesn't really look too much like stone and so I want to change the colors of the stone. So I'll press shift A and I'm going to search for a color ramp. Let's click on the color ramp and I can just drop it right in here. So we can now just change these colors and that'll change the colors for the stone. So I'm first going to click on the white tab and I'm going to make this white tab a dark gray. And if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using, you can click over to the hex value and on the hex you can type in three six times. So three 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 three. So that is the exact color that I'll be using. And then I'll click on the black tab and I'm going to make this a light brown. And if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using over on the hex, you can type in eight C 8C, 8C. So you're going to type in 8C three times. That is the exact color that I'll be using. And you can see now that is looking much more like stone. Now I want to create some little cracks in the stone. So I'm going to click on the noise texture and then shift click on the Voronoi texture. I'm now going to press control shift D. So shift D will duplicate the nodes. If you just press shift D, that will duplicate a node. But if you press control shift D, that is going to duplicate it, but it'll still keep that wire plugged up. So I'll just do that one more time. So you can shift select both of these and then press control shift D. And then I'm also going to control shift and select the Voronoi texture to preview it. Now to make it look like cracks, I'm going to click on the F1 and I'm going to change this to distance to edge. And now you can see that we have all these little cracks in here. And then on the noise texture, I'm going to change the scale to three so that those cracks are a little bit bigger. And then the scale here on the Voronoi, I'm going to change that to two. So now we have some much bigger cracks. Now I want to mix these cracks in with the color. So I'm going to press shift A. 
and I'm going to search for a mix RGB and let's drop the mix RGB right here after the color ramp. So I'll take this Voronoi texture down here and I'm gonna plug that into color two. And then I'm also gonna control shift and select the mix to preview it. And then this color ramp up here, the top one that is going to go into color one. Now I don't wanna evenly mix this together. I wanna click on the mix and I'm gonna change it to darken. And now if I start to turn up the factor, you can see it's just adding those cracks. Now I don't want the cracks to be very strong. I don't wanna be able to see them too well. So on the factor here, I'm just gonna change this to a 0.3. And that way you can definitely see the cracks, but they're pretty subtle. So then I can control shift and select the principled BSDF to preview that so far. Now I wanna be able to control the roughness because right now it's a little bit shiny. So I'm gonna take this color here and I'm gonna plug the color into the roughness. Now it's way too shiny, so I need to make this more rough. So to do that, I'll press shift day and I'm gonna search for another color ramp and we're gonna drop the color ramp right here before it goes into the roughness so we can now change these colors and that is going to control the roughness so I'm gonna click on the black tab and I'll click on the color and if I start to turn this up as it starts to get lighter it's gonna be more and more rough so I'll just bring that up pretty light because this is stone and so I do want it to be pretty rough so something like that now stone is usually pretty bumpy and so I want to put some data into the normal so I'm first gonna take the color and I'll just stick that into the normal and then we need to convert this to normal data you can see there's some weird shading issues so I'll press shift a and I'm going to search for a bump node let's click on the bump node and I want to put the bump node in between the color and the normal that way it'll convert this color data to normal data now I actually want to put the color into the height and that way it'll convert this color data into normal data so now the normal can go into the normal and you can see now it's very bumpy now it is pretty strong right now so on the strength value I'm going to turn the strength to a 0.25 just a 0.25 and so that way it's much less strong but it is still bumpy now i also want the crack texture to contribute to the bump if i control shift and select this you can see here is our crack texture so i'm going to click on this bump and i'll press shift d to duplicate it and drop it right here so the normal can just go through the normal because that is already going to be normal data so we can now take this voronoi texture and we can plug the distance into the height that is going to again convert it to normal data so if i control shift and select this you can see now that is normal data and then I can control shift and select this and you can see that now it's adding both of these bump maps together so I can now control shift and click on that final material and then I do want those cracks to be a little bit stronger so I'm going to turn the strength up to a point three five so that they're a little bit stronger now you can't really tell where they are and that is because if I control shift and select this you can see that it's not actually very contrasty so I want to make this map more contrasty so to do that I'm going to press shift a and let's search again for another color ramp and I can just drop the color ramp right in here between the Voronoi and the bump so I'm just going to drop it right here so I can now control shift and select this color ramp now I can click on this white tab and I can start to pull it closer to the black tab. And you can see when I do that, it's making it more contrasty because we're pushing these values closer together. So I'm gonna bring the white tab pretty close and that way now those cracks are much smaller. So if I control shift and click on the principal, you can see now the bumps on those cracks are much smaller because we're using this data instead of this data. So this data is going into the bump and now it's giving all those bumps and cracks there. So if I control shift and select the final material you can see that is looking much better now I want to give one more layer of bump because I want to have some j big jaggedy pieces to make it look more like stone so I'm gonna click on the noise texture and then shift click on the Voronoi and then again I'm gonna press Control shift D that will duplicate it but keep the object plugged up to the vector and then I can control shift and select the Voronoi so that we can preview it and see what we're doing now for this one, I'm going to take the color and I'm going to instead plug that into the randomness. And then I'm also gonna turn the scale right here to an eight. So the noise texture is distorting the randomness. And so if you zoom in here, you can see there's all this detail right there in those cracks. And then I'm also gonna turn the noise texture scale to a 6.3. And that way you can see there's some more noise there. All right, so we can now plug this into the bump as well. So I'm gonna go right over here and I'm gonna take this bump and I'll press shift D to duplicate it. We're gonna drop it right here. So the normal can go through the normal. So we now have this height value that we can add data into. So let's take the distance on the Voronoi. We're gonna plug the distance into the height and then I can control shift and select the principled BSDF to preview the final thing. And then it is just slightly strong. So on the strength value here on this last bump, I'm gonna change the strength down to a 0.2. So it's just slightly less strong but you can see what it's doing if I control shift and select it you can see it's adding in those little bumpy areas right there 
And that is it. So that is the finished procedural stone material. So I'll just give this a final render. And there we have it. So there is the procedural stone material. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it was helpful and thank you so much for watching. And again, if you'd like to help support me and this channel, then you can purchase this procedural material on my Gumroad store and also my patrons will have access to the project files as well. And you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more of my procedural materials and to watch more procedural material tutorials you can check out my procedural material tutorial playlist on YouTube I'll have all the links in the video description so thanks for watching and I hope to see you in a future tutorial <laughs>